Yo, what's up people? In this video we're going to take a look at this one, Obese to Beast. I've done a few videos on him. Seems like a nice guy. Um, this is going to talk about Abby Sharp. Uh, you know, this guy, basically, his whole thing is like, I used to be fat. I'm not fat anymore. I love helping people not be fat anymore. You know, let's all feel good and go to do CrossFit kind of thing. Nice guy. Nice guy. He's not, he's he's just nice. I don't know. A lot of as opposed to like Swole Normus, Alan Roberts, me, snake diet guy. I'm throwing, I like, you like how I like snuck myself in there with all these like famous popular people. Um, he's just very nice, I think. I don't know, maybe in this video he'll be an asshole. I doubt it. Anyway, if you have any other videos, YouTubers you want to take a look at, let me know. What is up you guys? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for clicking on today's video. So today's video, I want to talk about something that I've noticed recently on a lot of social media, and that is going to be registered dietitians that are really in the camp of intuitive eating, um, sharing their opinions on that. And I just kind of wanted to, uh, to talk about how I feel about how some of these registered dietitians are going about sharing their ideology. Now, before we get into the topic, again, I want to remind you guys, I do have a podcast that I would love for you to check out. It's called Worker Change. I do it with my brother. We have a lot of really cool interviews. Uh, we talk about a lot of topics that I'll talk about here on video, but it's just a longer format. So if you do like these types of videos, you will really like the podcast. I have a YouTube link down there. Also, if you search Worker Change on pretty much any podcast platform, it'll pop up. So thanks again so much, you guys, for supporting it. I really, really appreciate it. Now, before we get into this, I do want to make it very clear that I do believe that most of the people that I'm going to be talking about in this video, and most of the people that share what they believe, they do it because they're trying come from a place of being helpful. They're not trying to be hurtful. And I want to make that very clear. So I don't want anyone to think that this video is me trying to attack anyone. But again, it's just me sharing my thoughts as to why I think maybe the way that they are explaining how they feel is not as beneficial as maybe they might believe. So when it comes to intuitive eating, this is a, an eating style that has become very, very popular. And it's actually, <laughs> surprise, surprise, it's the way that I eat. So I am not at all against intuitive eating because this is how I eat. I don't sit there and track all of my meals anymore. I am able to understand what my body needs and I feel myself accordingly. But that being said, I understand that getting to the point where I am now was a massive struggle and it took a lot of trial and error to get here. I do believe that anybody can get to what I've gotten to and, and that they can't eat intuitively, but I do believe that it is a process and there are certain steps that maybe different people are going to have to take to get to where I am now. But intuitive eating is just eating in a way where you're not tracking, you're not obsessing over food, you're able to understand, okay, this is what my body needs to perform, this is what I feel like my body wants to have, and if you don't have any super disordered eating uh, you know, habits that might be going on, you can do that and then see success with that. Now, intuitive eating is a very, very popular eating style when it comes to a lot of RDs or registered dietitians that are against <laughs> diet culture that really do not like uh, the whole before and after thing, they don't like tracking any food, they are very much against anything that could be thought of as a diet. So this first post that I want to read, it says this, weight loss in and of itself is not a bad thing, it's intentional weight loss that I won't promote. And then going on in the You know, I get so many, <clears throat> I, honestly, like, I don't, I don't know, I, I don't, like, how is this, have, have just, have enough people just not watched my videos that they, they don't understand that I'm right and everybody else is fucking wrong and stupid and just, like, trying to take their money because they're fucking lazy, you know, with bad habits? Is that, what's going on here, really, honestly, like, I, I, I made a video, I made a video, everybody, I made a video. All right, where is it? This one. Shit. Okay, it's this video. Sadly, it's only it's got less than a thousand views. How to overcome binge eating disorder in 58 minutes? It's an hour long video. What are the odds somebody's gonna watch an hour long video? Probably not very good. But look for this video. Please look for this video. Like, if you're fat and you're out of shape, watch this video. If you're a fucking anorexic skeleton, watch this video. If you're like a skinny fat dude who like just started working out watch this video like this this is the secret to getting in good shape and being healthy like actually please go watch this fucking video what's the problem with all these dietitians all these fucking stupid influencers i'm not talking about him by the way it's not about him i'm talking about the people that he's talking about what's the problem with intuitive eating is most people their intuition is fucking garbage and they're fucking idiots and they're lazy and they have no good habits in place it's like telling like it's like you, you uh, no offense anybody let's say you take some fucking sub 50 IQ welfare recipient and you say you know what just spend your money intuitively it's okay just do it intuitively just do what feels right what's he gonna do or she they're gonna go to the fucking mall blow their entire fucking welfare check and that's it I'm like well they told me to do it intuitively how come it didn't work well the, this budgeting doesn't work either what's going on what's the problem what do you have to do intuitive eating works if you have the additional pressure the additional leverage on yourself of physical exercise. That's the only way intuitive eating works, really. Because, for example, if you exercise, if you, if you participate in strenuous exercise, the most common of which is weight training, if you do weight training, then you will naturally desire uh, more nutrient-dense foods, i.e. meat. Okay, so that solves two problems for you. Number one, you're exercising and you're changing your body composition, you're burning fat, building muscle, blah, blah, blah. You feel better, endorphin rush, Okay, that's number one. Number two, you're naturally going to crave shitty foods because after enough 
Honestly, I don't think it'll take that much trial and error to realize that, okay, you ate pizza, you felt like shit. You ate a fucking salad, you were dead the next day. You had fucking pasta, okay, you felt a little bit better, but still kind of shitty. Oh my god, you had a fucking hamburger, you felt amazing. But you had a steak, you felt even better. You fucking smashed, like, three chicken breasts, you felt, like, godlike. It's very clear what foods you should eat. But the problem is you have all these like dietitians, nutritionists, all these people with their like little cute Instagram page who make these retarded quotes that like get a lot of likes. So these, sorry ladies, these fucking stupid girls, they see this like, oh, well she's pretty, she has great lighting in her photos, her picture got, you know, a thousand likes, that means I should probably do what she says and not like take a closer look or trust my own experience or my actual in intuition. Intuitive eating is not actually intuitive eating. It's like intuitive eating is listening to people and doing what they say to do who espouse intuitive eating as a proper strategy. Whatever. It's another circle jerk. Anyway, people, look, here's the point. Eat meat. Eat once a day. Go to the fucking gym. That's it. That'll solve your problems. In the caption, it says, because there seems to be confusion, weight loss in and of itself is not a bad thing. If you lose weight as a result of listening to your body and adapting healthy habits, there's nothing wrong with that. And if your healthy habits do not result in weight loss, there's also nothing wrong with that. It doesn't mean that you're doing something wrong or that those behaviors are not beneficial. I would say I pretty much agree with all of that right there. I don't want you to feel ashamed for losing weight or even wanting to lose weight. We're all immersed in diet culture. It's hard to not desire weight loss. But with what I've learned about intentional weight loss, it's no longer something I can support. And now this is where I start to disagree. I think that a lot of times when it comes to these registered dietitians, or these people that are, are very huge proponents of intuitive eating, they seem to maybe forget about the people that truly have disordered eating problems or are food addicts. It seems like these people just think everyone is maybe just always struggling with trying to lose 10 pounds or 20 pounds and it's really frustrating to me because I come from being morbidly obese and my <laughs> intuitive eating was literally killing me on a day-to-day -day basis. When if you're just pursuing weight loss, you can make some really bad decisions. But if you just because you're focused on your weight, that isn't in and of itself this terrible thing that is like the end of the world. If you are 200 pounds overweight, focusing on your weight a little bit, I don't think is that big of a deal. Not everyone agrees on the exact numbers, but several studies have found that intentional weight loss is not sustainable beyond two to five years for 90 to 98 percent of participants. Intentional weight loss results not only in gaining the weight back for the majority of people, but two out of three gain back more. Intentional weight loss also leads to weight cycling for many, weight yo-yoing up and down, which has also been linked to negative health outcomes. Intentional weight loss is not the cure-all for every ailment, it's often as it's often touted, and it's not the secret to more confidence or better body image. Finally, intentional weight loss can impede our health by putting the focus on restrictive behaviors that are more likely to result in weight loss rather than on nourishing behaviors that take into account what our bodies need. I do agree that most people, when they go on diets, they are going on these crazy restrictive diets. I, I don't think they need to do either. I think people need to focus on, again, having those healthy habits, finding something that's sustainable. Sustainability has been my favorite word for years now because that is very, very important. But again, I think these people, they take it too far and they make it this black and white situation when there's a lot of gray in between. Also, I do agree that a lot of people, especially with a lot of how these diets have been touted and have been marketed as, is that losing weight will solve all your problems. I just recently made a video that talked about the three things that losing weight actually didn't solve at all. So I think it is very important that more people do talk about how, you know, losing weight, maybe improve their health but it's not like it's going to be this uh, cure-all that's gonna solve he's so nice how is he how old is he I, I wonder why he's so patient and why he's not as bitter as I am I, I don't know maybe maybe he's just patient because he used to be obese am I muted I need a new fucking microphone anyway um, this is like saying okay the, the whole intentional weight loss is like they, they have that statistic where it's like People who try to lose weight, they end up gaining it back in two to five years, and then they gain back more. Therefore, intentional weight loss is a bad idea, and you shouldn't do it. Okay, this is like saying, um, I, what, what is this? And it makes no mention of like how these people actually try to lose weight. Most of which is crash dieting, starving yourself. It's all these, again, sorry ladies, did I say this in this video? I think I did. All these fucking retarded girls who try to do things the wrong way because some fucking dietitian or some Instagram celebrity said that that's what they should do. Or honestly, like, I, that's not even what they said they should, or, or did they? I don't really know, like, 1,200 calories. So like, well, I read in Cosmo that you have to eat under 1,200 calories to lose weight. So I guess I'll just pick 1,200 calories, regardless of the fact that, like, my body is different than somebody else's body who might have a different type of lifestyle and be taller and way more. But I'm just at 1,200, that's the number. Anyway, here's the point. This is like saying, I tried to do something the wrong way, it didn't work, therefore trying something else also probably isn't going to work because it's the act of trying that's bad. What? Like, really? This is, these are scientists that came up with this? Like, actually scientists? Like, people who have, like, advanced degrees, they, are they the ones who made this conclusion? I'm not sure. Or, or are these the, like, stupid Instagram people who are like, I read a study that said that people who tried to lose weight had worse health, so therefore trying to lose weight is bad. Okay, like how fucking retarded are you actually? Like, do you not realize that there are thousands if not millions of people around the world who every single day exist with like attractive bodies as a result of pretty much doing the exact same thing? Like, 
eating nutrient dense foods and going to the fucking gym and lifting weights. Why, why, why are you making it so much more complicated than that, ladies of America? Really, actually, ladies, I feel like men instinctively know this. Do they? Do, do you not, gentlemen, out shaped gentlemen who maybe watch my videos? Like, ladies, why is it so hard for you to fucking understand? Go to the gym, lift the weights, eat nutrient dense food. What? Why? Why is this hard for you? Like, your way is not working. Your way has never worked. How many times have you tried your way and it has not worked? Stop doing it. Like, how many times are you gonna fucking bang your head against the wall? Really? Why don't you try something else? I don't know. Why, why am I getting so tilted from this video? Every problem that you might have. So no, I am not anti-weight loss or anti-health, but I am against pursuing intentional weight loss and won't promote it. I'm against fat phobia and the notion that thinner is always better. I'm against diet culture promoting weight loss as a key to better health and a better life. I'm against the suffering that people put themselves through in order to shrink their bodies because they've been told all their lives that this is a worthy pursuit, and it's their duty to keep their body in check. I don't want to shame you for losing weight or wanting to, but I refuse to promote the pursuit of weight loss. Now at the end of this post, they bring up fat phobia, and again, I don't understand why someone wanting to lose weight or feeling that they, they need to lose weight for their health is a fat phobic notion, or those have anything to do with each other. I, I completely disagree with that because again, I was 360 pounds, and I don't believe it was fat phobic of me to want to lose weight to better my life and eventually, hopefully, live a much longer life. This next post says so many of the people selling the idea that weight loss. Is the secret to living your happiest, healthiest life are so deep into disordered eating that they don't even see it. So just taking that post at face value, I can say that there absolutely are definitely some people out there that have lost a lot of weight that are now big influencers that are really struggling with their relationship with food. So again, there are points in this post that I do agree with. Then she goes on to say, I know this because I was one of them. I was coached to sell my story, how sad my life was before my transformation, and how amazing it was after I lost the weight. I told a great story and I had the before and after pics to back it up. I never felt like I was being dishonest. I just didn't recognize how deep I was into my obsession with food, fitness, and thinness until I started to recover from the disordered eating that developed when I made selling fitness my job. I didn't see that my life had started to revolve around calories, macros, and pounds, and I viewed my growing obsession as merely dedication to a healthier life. I also had no idea how much fat phobia was wrapped up in both my transformation photos and the story that accompanied them. Again, we are linking transformation pictures before and after photos with fat phobia. I mean, I'm sure there are some people that, that you might be. This is the person who has making all these quotes. People like, would you, would you take fitness advice from this person? Like, forget about all the stuff that you saw. Forget about everything else. Like, look at this person. Let's get a, let's get a closer look. Look at this arm. Does this look like the arm of a healthy person? Does this look like the face of a healthy person? Does this look like the type of pose that a healthy person would be striking to show off their body? Furthermore, there I had to look how far down I had to scroll to find a picture of her. No pictures of her. Why would anybody take advice from this type of person? Let's, I'm, I'm honestly asking, why would anybody take advice from this type of person? Here's why. 53,000 followers. That's why. That's the only reason anybody takes advice from somebody like this is because of social proof. And when I say anybody, I'm saying women. No man is going to take advice from this person ever. Ever. But women will fucking gobble this shit up in a minute because they'll see, they'll click on this book. Like, oh wow, a thousand likes. This must be good. How many comments? Let's see. Doesn't say. Whatever. Tw 10 comments, 15 comments. It's a joke. It's a complete joke. And honestly, I've said this before. Wow, I haven't I haven't done a video like this in so long. It's been so long since I've like said stuff like this. But if you if you believe this, if you buy into this, then you get what you deserve. This girl, she gets what she deserves. Really. I guess you know there are fifty thousand people out there who buy into her message. Does that mean she's right? Clearly not. Because if you look at her physical like embodiment of her belief system, she's fucking fat. Straight up, that's a fat person. You could take advice on how to be healthy from a fat person? I wouldn't. I'd rather go into any gym, ask a guy who's dumb as a fucking rock, doesn't know how to read, doesn't know how to write, barely knows how to like string two words together, who's in good shape, I'd be like, bro, how do I get in shape? That's it. Is this not clear to people? I feel like women a lot of the times, I'm sorry to rip on women this entire video, but seriously, like this is fucking, like, are you, are you not disgusted with yourselves, ladies, that they, you go in circles like this and you, you don't find a solution and you stay in this like circle of misery because other people are also miserable and you're so desperate for like the, the social, um, you know, pat on the back from other people and you prefer that to actually being fit and healthy? Because if you did want to be fit and healthy, wouldn't you just choose the logical choice and go actually do what the fit and healthy people do? Really, do you think fit and healthy people starve themselves? Do you think fit and healthy people, like, look at me, okay, do I, do I seem like I'm starving myself? Also, to be fair, you know, I probably could drop a pound or two, but, but even me, like, dude, I, I can go, I can go run for an hour right now, and then go work out for two hours after that. I'm good, you know? Or take any fit person, any healthy person. Do they, do they look 
like, do they have sunken eyes and they look like they're about to die and they're out of shape and like they're hating their life? Probably not. They probably look like they feel pretty good and life is good because they're fit and healthy. Anyway, ladies, stop fucking listening to these popular, the, the popular girls of high school. And why don't you just go study people who are actually fit and healthy and do what they do? Be able to say or, or fatphobic with the way that they post before and afters, but I think linking or lumping everyone together that posts before and afters, that posts their progress, how excited they are to have lost weight, especially if you are someone that is coming from again morbid obesity. I know I bring that up a lot, but again, I don't think these people that are posting this stuff really understand how much of a prison you are in when you are morbidly obese and the amount that you can move is very limited, the, the amount that you can do in your life is very limited. The fact that you might be thinking to yourself, "My life is going to end very early," and it's because of my size. I, I really don't think the people that post these things are thinking about those people. And for me, I am always going to think about those people because I was one of them. I don't believe that everyone who's trying to sell you weight loss and the supposed perfect life that comes along with a thinner body is an evil agent of diet culture out to make you hate yourself. But I see how so many people have bought into the lies that diet culture perpetuates that they don't see how disordered and fatphobic their behaviors are. Be careful who you look up to and take advice from online and elsewhere in your life. Looking the part of what we consider to be healthy and fit does not mean that someone's habits are healthy at all. And it's very likely that they might not even realize how disordered their habits have become. Now again, there are parts with that that I do agree. I think especially with Instagram, most people are posting their highlight reel. So you might be following people that you think are super healthy and fit and doing everything right, but in the background, they are really struggling with some disordered eating. They're really struggling with just really unhealthy habits that they're not maybe posting about. So I do agree that there are definitely some some people online that might not be the best to be following. Now the next person we're gonna be talking about is Abby Sharp. She's a YouTuber and she's actually a registered dietitian as well. She has a whole series on her channel where she reacts to full day of eatings and gives her opinions and her thoughts. She recently did one on Gabby Hanna and a couple people have sent me this and wanted me to maybe share my thoughts on it. Her video is about 40 minutes long, so we're not going to go into in depth about every single thing. But again, here at the very start, she's talking about how Gabby is basically immersed in diet culture. Hey everyone, I'm Abby Sharp. Welcome to Abby's Kitchen. So today's What I Eat a Day YouTuber review is of Gabby Hanna. That the most frustrating and honestly sometimes heartbreaking thing when it comes to weight loss is all of the conflicting advice and opinions out there. Everybody has an opinion. Some people will tell you to eat only three big meals a day. Some people will tell you to eat six small meals a day. Some people will say don't eat certain foods. Other people will say the exact same food is essential to your diet. If you are not one of the beautiful unicorns who is blessed with a mythical genetic makeup, figuring it out can be really, really difficult. But you have to not give up. You have to not let the missteps or the backslide stop you. So totally agree with Gabby on the fact that like yeah like the all or nothing mentality is not healthy and you need to really tune into your body's intuition to find out what feels good to you. Um, but I just kind of wanted to flag the kind of fitspo diet culture language that was going on there um, just because I do feel like that could be triggering for some people um, and I don't want people to, to hear that. I'm so triggered by her giving a trigger warning. That triggers me. Like how, how did we, how does, how is this what Western culture has become? This trigger warning bullshit. If you're triggered by that, you're a fucking weak human being. Like can we go put you to work in like a mine somewhere? Because you're absolutely useless as a human being. Like, what what can we get out of you as a society? What what are you going to contribute if like trigger words are going to like send you into a tizzy? You're you're absolutely useless as a human being, and I and I question honestly, like I question your right to participate in in the beautiful gift that we have that is modern society. You don't deserve it. You're you're a consumer. You're fucking useless. You're never going to create any good in the world. Actually, never probably. And um, you're, you're like, if, if they, if the machines take over and we're in the matrix, like, I hope you're one of the first people who's like plugged into the like energy harvesting machine. Straight up, like, sorry, but not actually sorry. That video, I, I reviewed that video. I did a reaction to that video by Gabby Hanna. That is one of the best what I eat in a day videos that I've ever seen, unironically, um, ever. Of, of one of these, like, I mean, obviously the standard is set extremely low. Like, fuck this Abby Sharp lady, she's fucking retarded. That was one of the best videos. Why? For the simple reason that she ate eggs or meat for every single meal, and she went to the gym, okay? She ate three meals a day, fine, whatever. Two out of three is honestly, like, a bazillion times better than most of these, like, retarded fucking anorexic, like, models or celebrities or influencers who, like, drink fucking vegan almond milk and, like, starred themselves on three saltine crackers a day and are like i eat this because this is all i want to eat um i'm not going to go to the gym like no or some of them mentioned going to the gym like okay sure sure you went to the gym anyway fuck i'm so triggered i can't help it i'm just so triggered abby sharp what a joke what an absolute joke and furthermore all of this like this crystal lady okay this is not designed to help anybody this is designed to get internet points that's all this is this is for internet points, for people to say, yeah, you're right. That's why she's doing this straight up. That's why Abby Sharp does all the things that Abby Sharp does. It's just to get internet points, which I guess you could make the argument that's what we all do this for is to get internet points. Um, but some people are, are promoting what I believe to be ultimately um, honorable pursuits, like the pursuit of fitness. And some people are advocating that it's okay for people to be fucking slime and like literally like the fucking like liquid in a fucking garbage bag that's what they're saying it's like oh it's okay you're a fucking loser you're a pathetic human being no problem like you'll never be anything in life it's too hard for you to reach your goal and you don't want to try 
that's totally fine. I hope I hope what this person said didn't make you feel bad. I really hope that that's the case because you should never have to feel bad. Feeling bad is bad. And anybody who makes you feel bad is bad. What a joke. And feel like a little bit of victim blaming, like, oh, if I'm not feeling great or if I'm not at the way that I want to be, then I'm just not trying hard enough and, I, and I've given up. So I just want to flag that that may be problematic. It seems like a lot of people, when they are in the, in the camp of anti-diet culture, in the camp of intuitive eating, it's if you feel like you need to work hard, that's a bad thing and you shouldn't ever have to work hard. And I think that there is a season in your life where you might have to work pretty hard. Like when I had to lose my weight, I had to work pretty hard, but it's about learning as you are working hard and learning how to find a sustainable way to eat, find a sustainable diet. And it's not going to be easy. And I think that a lot of people that are anti-diet culture, intuitive eating, they think that it's just going to be easy for everybody, but that's not the case when you are coming from a food addiction or you're coming from other disordered eating. Now, one of the comments on her video actually made me laugh. So someone commented, when talking about eating intuitively, you greatly underestimate my body's ability to tell me to eat an entire family size pizza every day. And Abby replied saying, it may at first, but once you've stopped the dichotomous thinking, those urges go away. And then somebody else replied to her and said, wow, this is a gross oversimplification. It's clear that you've never really struggled with overeating. It's great that you found something that works for you, i.e. intuitive eating, but it's not necessarily for everyone. And I think that's an incredibly perfect way to describe how a lot of these people that are huge proponents of intuitive eating and anti-diet culture, they, I really don't think that most of them have truly struggled with being addicted to food. Because if I, when I was at my heaviest said, okay, I'm just going to stop feeling guilty about eating bad food and I'm just going to do it anyway. And then eventually my body will intuitively tell me to eat less or eat better. It just wouldn't have happened because I had absolutely no knowledge about what is healthy what wasn't healthy, what I should be eating, what I shouldn't be eating. And so if I just was like, well, I'll just figure out what my body intuitively tells me to eat. I was eating fast food three times a day. That wasn't because I was feeling guilty when I would eat fast food and then eat fast food again. It was because I had absolutely no knowledge about nutrition or anything like that. I think one of the most important things when it comes to being... You had, you had no idea fast food was bad for you. You had no idea all that Coke and French fries. No, I mean, uh, I mean, really? Like, who, who, what human being does not know that fast food is bad for you? Come on. Come on, dog. Other than that, like bless, bless, bless his heart, really. Bless him for being so patient and like actually treating these people as if they were intelligent human beings and, and answering their points as if they were actually um, doing anything other than basically shouting with their megaphone and saying, hey everybody, I'm saying something that will make you nod in agreement and say yes. So tell me I'm cool, tell me I'm good because I don't want to change and none of us should have to change. That's that's what this message is, really. Not, not not his message. He's like answering them like legitimately. Like I've said this before, but this guy Alan Roberts Swole Normus, the fucking black girl with the like green hair, whatever her name is. My thoughts will offend you. I forget her name. Um they, they all or all of them except for him, they take a more like hardline approach, like more aggressive. He's nice and thoughtful and patient. I, I wonder how long that will last. M maybe that's his thing. He's just like a nice, patient person. Um, but this is why I say I have no patience for this. Because look, you don't need to know what to do. Just do what I tell you to do, okay? Eat meat. Why do I say eat meat? Why, why am I fucking busting a nut over here over Gabby Hanna who ate meat in her video? I'm like praising her. Um, because when you eat meat, everybody, and you should watch that binge eating disorder video that I made, when you eat meat, you will get full faster. You will feel less desire to snack later. You will be full and you won't want to eat anymore. Like, I, I tell people this, like, if you eat once a day, if you fill up on meat before you eat anything else, and if you go to the gym, you can have whatever you want, right? That's what I do, I have whatever I want. Really, every night I'm thinking eating ice cream or they have these like, it's called a mung bean cake. I eat a fucking entire box every night. You know, I, I don't give a fuck because I know I'm in the fucking gym for two hours. Sometimes I go for a run, and I know I eat a fucking pound of meat beforehand, so my my binging is is limited, like by a lot. But people don't. I don't know. I guess I guess it's counterintuitive. People think to eat meat because they're like, well, I went to McDonald's yesterday. McDonald's is meat, right? Because there's meat in the hamburger. You know, totally like ignoring the fact that they fucking slammed a large Coke and a large fry, fries, and had a milkshake afterwards. They're like, well, I had, there was meat in the hamburger, but I, I'm getting fatter from eating McDonald's. It's like, no, dog, eat eat meat. Do, do you know what? Do people know what meat is? Like, you go to you go to the grocery store. Meat is flesh, animal flesh. But what? what? What's going on here? Why, why are people really that dumb, or do they just don't know? I wonder. Why can I can I go on TV? Like, how could I get a platform? <laughs> if only there was a platform to like syndicate my content <laughs> to reach the entire world. Ugh.
being able to eat intuitively. And again, that's, this is how I eat, is having the knowledge about what's in certain types of foods, the amount of calories that might be in certain oils and liquid calories and understanding maybe what you should be avoiding when you put a dressing on your salad. You know, is this dressing have like 50 grams of fat or is it maybe a lower fat dressing? Like understanding those things are really important if you are going to use intuitive eating so you're not overeating all the time. And I think that's one of the things that most people seem to forget, especially when they're a registered dietitian, probably because they have they have a really healthy relationship with food and they know what's in most different foods. But if you look at the regular American diet, someone that is, you know, dieting or maybe doesn't understand food, they're not going to have that knowledge. So to just tell them, oh, just eat intuitively and you'll be fine. I think that, again, that's a gross oversimplification of what it really takes to be able to eat intuitively and, and stay in a calorie range that's not going to be putting on fat over the years. So again, to wrap it up, I think that intuitive eating is great. And I really think that for a lot of people, it can be very useful. But I think that it is very important to understand it does take a while to get there. And if you're not there right now and you're still trying to track your calories, you're still trying to track your macros, I don't think that there's anything wrong with that. I don't think that you're toxic. I don't think that you're fatphobic. I don't think that you're stuck in diet culture and you never be able to get out of it. I think that it is an important tool to learn, to understand how to track food, to understand what is in, in certain types of food, what to maybe avoid, what maybe works for you. I don't think that there's anything wrong and that you're a toxic person for partaking in tracking certain macros or calories. But again, that is just my opinion. I would love to hear what you guys think down in the comment section down below. Thank you guys so much. For um, he's nice. Like, you know, our, our side needs, needs nice people too, I guess, right? It's like, if you think of it, not that it's a war, again, not like... I actually fucking care what anybody does ever like really I do not I, maybe he cares personal like I was fat too and I was well chubby whatever um, I'm gonna leave a comment how many okay 658 comments um, people are just looking for uh, a way to virtue signal their no way this makes sense the end of the day, people are just looking for an excuse. Most people. Most people are just looking for an excuse to not have to go through the change, pain of changing. Ugh, I can't even do it, it's just so bad. Um, you're very patient and nice in that you treat these pandering celebrities as if they were intelligent human beings and not just pushing stupid people's people's buttons to get internet points. That said, people believe these influencers and choose to not do anything to do what they know is actually what deep down inside they know is the right decision to improve their health, i.e. exercise and not eating shit food, then they get what they deserve. Uh, I don't know, I should at least say something nice here. Um, great video. Keep it up. Keep it up, Bucko. You're doing great. 600,000 subscribers. Straight up, people get what they fucking deserve. Sorry, ladies, fat ladies, fat men out there. I don't care what your fucking excuse is, really. I don't care, you know, you're sad because diet culture, you try to lose weight. A study said this, a study says that. Like, I've said this before, show me any study you want, show me any fucking scientist you want, show me any nutritionist or dietitian that you want, guess what? The laws of the universe are still the fucking same. You go to the gym, you lift weights, you eat meat, you don't eat shitty food, your body will change, you'll get more muscles, you will lose fat, you will lose weight, you will look amazing. People will treat you nicer because you look amazing. That's it. Bottom line. Done. Show me a book that says the opposite. Show me anything you want. Round up 10,000 people. Draw a million people who fucking like your post on Instagram. I don't give a fuck. You know why? Because at the end of the day, like I said, you go into the gym, you train hard, I'm not muted. Okay. You go into the gym, you train hard, your body will change. That's it. It's that simple. You don't want it to be that simple. You want to fucking like get your little dopamine release when you scroll Instagram by reading like some fat girls, you know, reinforcement of your poor life choices. Okay, cool. It's a fat person that's reinforcing your life choices. She's a joke. Sorry. She's a joke. Abby Sharp, pandering. She wants more fucking subscribers. Also a joke. You're all a fucking joke. Fucking I hate all of you. No, I, I mean, I, I kind of do, but, but please subscribe to my channel anyway. Um, if you guys have other suggestions for videos or YouTubers, let me know. Peace.